I'm Brendan Murphy, and this is another Two Minute PD, except it's not going to be two minutes today, closer to 15 minutes. For those who don't know me, I've been in education for 15 years as a teacher, coach, curriculum specialist, and education specialist at an ed tech startup. And today I'm going to be talking about parental engagement and how we can improve that in our uh, schools and classrooms. Hey, thousand bucks per child. Sounds great. Where do I sign up? But the keyword here is effective. Surprisingly, some studies are showing that parents who help with homework actually make academics go down. And there's also some research out there saying, depending on who you ask, even the usefulness of homework is kind of in question. I think because parents are so removed from education, they feel they have to leave it to us, the experts. And the only way they can help is really just making sure homework is done. And I don't know about you, but when I start asking kids to do chores around the house, it starts becoming a battle of the wills. It can also be the quality of homework. Everyone knows if you're going to learn something, you have to interact with it. But perhaps a list of practice problems isn't really interacting with, home, with learning the way we think it is. And of course, there's some parents who just do their homework for their children. And sometimes parents undermine our lessons. I teach math, and often we talk about different ways of solving problems. Parents don't always understand the value of that. And they might ask their kids, hey, don't do it that way. This is the way you're supposed to multiply. Of course, as teachers, we know how often, how often do we go over homework, or do we just mark it as done and move on to the next topic? Or maybe we're trying something innovative, like being a flipped educator, except the flipped education is no different from when I was in high school 30 years ago. And the teacher asked us to read a chapter, and then we talk about it the next day in class. At the end of the day, homework, if it's just a chore to finish or just work, busy work to be done, it causes fights and really undermines learning and, and makes the school the bad guy. Try this. Do an image search for busy work. You might find most of the pictures are students doing homework. Instead of homework as practice, we really want students to interact with their own learning. Then they can review lessons or watch videos or explain what they've learned or any other of a number of activities that involves putting learning into their own words, taking ownership of their own learning. We as teachers need to stop giving work to be done and start giving fuel for that standard family dinner question. What did you do at school today? If homework isn't really important and parental help with homework is detrimental to grades, then maybe the idea of putting homework on the web is kind of wrong. Actually, the main point of a website, a classroom website, is to communicate with parents. I know when I write lesson plans, like many teachers, I think backwards design. I start with the end goal of a unit and kind of build lessons over the major, major concepts of that unit. Individual lessons don't matter as much, and, and usually I change them the morning of. So instead of putting up daily homework, I can put in concepts of what I'm teaching on the website. For example, I teach math, and if I were teaching multiplication to my students, I wouldn't put up 100 practice problems. Instead, I might put up a half a dozen videos of different ways to multiply. And then homework would be, hey, show this to your parents and play around with whichever one seems the most fun that night. And as we progress along the unit, they might start asking them to, hey, you tried two or three of these. Now start talking to your parents. How is it the same or different from the multiplication that they know? And why does it work? It takes the focus off of doing work and starts asking students to take ownership of the understanding of concepts. And parents start supporting this because they're not being the taskmaster and forcing the kids to do homework, but they're talking about education. If we only invite parents on parent nights, they aren't comfortable coming to school. If the only time parents get a phone call is when their kid is in trouble, they're not comfortable with school. If the only time they hear praise about their kids is when they win some big awards, parents are not comfortable. They're not a part of school. If your parents have to ask permission, they're not welcome at school. Now, yes, sometimes with some people, the only time they care is when something goes wrong and they want to complain. And this, this will definitely be a disruption in school. But there has to be a better way of protecting against that 
than to alienate almost every other parent in your classroom. Building a community. It's easier said than done. If your idea of a good classroom is students quietly working, then any visitor will disrupt that quiet, studious atmosphere. That isn't to say classrooms with a lot of activity are bad or better. Many educational leaders really appreciate the quiet environment. But we can make classrooms more welcoming by becoming more student-centered. Then if a visitor comes in and starts asking, hey, what are you learning today? The student's forced to put his learning into their own words, thus making them learn a little more. Of course, not all teachers will want this type of change. There's still more we can do. Anytime we're at an extracurricular activity, we have the opportunity to build community, take off the suit, and engage parents and other family members in a more relaxed atmosphere. Make it a point to shake hands and connect adults to students. Get to know siblings. Say things like, I look forward to seeing you in my classroom in a couple of years, or something like that. <clears throat> if you have bus duty, or drop off and pick up times, any chance you have to meet parents face to face and become more human, become more social with them, builds community, makes people feel welcome in the school. You know how they teach us to shake every kid's hand on the way in the door and make sure they look you in the eye and know you? The same thing works with parents too. It makes us more human, more approachable. We know students don't learn if they don't do work. Who does any work if they hate a place? If parents are comfortable with school and know that they can interact beyond just discipline or forced interactions, then they become more positive about school and in turn their children become more positive about school. When families want to come to school to see what the student has done, then the student starts doing higher quality work because they're working not just for you, but for their family. Maybe they're trying to get bragging rights over their brother or sister or something. Anyway, what doesn't work is telling kids, hey, you're going to grow up and work in a cube farm, so nose to the grindstone. And we do this all the time. How many times have you heard or said yourself, next year, the teacher won't be that nice. When you get to high school, you won't be allowed to do that anymore. We all need to really keep our eyes on the ultimate goal. And it's not to get a job or to make huge sums of money, but important goals like lifelong learning and sense of accomplishment and happiness and that sort of thing. And I know it sounds like a kind of hippie dippy trippy thing that's lacking in rigor. Students aren't working for something they want. They actually put in any effort into it. Every night when I ask my son to do dishes, he hates it and rushes through it because it's a chore to be done for him. I have the energy, I redo the dishes with him. But more often than not, he just kind of breaks down and cries and tells me how I'm such a mean dad and I force him to do all of this work. We have disparate, different aspirations for dishes. I want a clean dish to be to eat off of tomorrow, and he just wants to be done so he can do what he wants to do. That's really kind of our parental engagement in a nutshell. So how do we teach parents to be more effective? And the most important reason to engage parents is to help students understand the value of education, to make their aspirations the same as ours. It's not just a chore to get done, but it's a, play, a clean plate to eat off of tomorrow. Now, all of our students have at least one adult they look up to, whether that's a parent or an aunt, an uncle, a big brother from the Y, or a cousin, or whatever, somebody or some buddies that they look up to. Somebody they want to grow up and be like. And that person will be the one who teaches the student to strive for their personal best. They'll set a standard that's looked up to in their home. And if they don't have those standards at home, they won't have them at school. So our job as schools and parental engagement is to kind of marry those standards together. And how do we teach parents to do this? What we really value as educators is education. And grades aren't important. We have to stop putting so much emphasis on getting grades and doing work. And put more ev emphasis on engaging in the, lear the learning. We don't want students to work for the sake of doing work. We want them to engage in learning. And everyone is a part of the solution. Teachers, 
parents, siblings, everyone. Of course, this also means that we have to stop giving homework that we don't value. Put emphasis on learning, not on grades, not on finishing something, not on finishing a, a, a worksheet, but on getting into learning. This really makes everybody kind of a partner in it. It's the academic socialization. If we even come close to this goal of a real partnership with families, teach them to value education, and that value is communicated to everyone, we build higher expectations. Learning is discussed, not just the work. And these conversations connect education to real life events and start building higher aspirations for the future lead to more stimulating environments at home and are the basis for critical thinking and good, dis good decision-making skills. Grit, and I know it's a silly choice of words that kind of minimizes reality. We aren't just teaching students to try harder. Instead, we're, we're building a character, a desire to use education to achieve ultimate goals. People, parents, siblings, adults at home can teach how education can lead to these achievements, that the work has to be done by the students and, and how they're responsible for their own success. And adults in their lives, families and teachers, they have these higher expectations. Now back in Tom Sawyer's day, the tool was a switch, but thankfully today we have much better choices. When parents come to school, come to the school website, it shouldn't be just work to be done. It should be kind of a portal into the classroom. For teachers, the learning management system is a content holder for students. But for parents, it's that view into the classroom. Uh, parents should see concepts being taught. If possible, the teacher can include videos or some kind of self-directed learning explorations. And instead of just a homework page, places where they can explore. And as students get older, it can be more independent projects to work on, preferably longer term projects. Parents shouldn't be expected to come to our website on a daily basis to look for the homework, but come there during the unit two or three times and find stuff that they, they can do with their kids together to explore the concepts that they're learning. Flipped learning is also wonderful. Um, it's a great way to get engagement and you can check for learning and all that other stuff. But recording a lecture is too long. They want to be short. And um, like any other homework, the newness of the video is going to wear off eventually. And we can change, change tactics, build lesson paths or discussions or something like that. But the real value is not reading a chapter the night before and discussing it in class. The real value is bringing the actual teacher into the home, it makes the teacher more human, makes the parent feel more connected to the classroom. At the end of the day, the goal is to make everyone in our student's family feel like part of a larger school family, that they too can not only be part of the children's education, but are a valuable part. More than just the taskmaster, but a cheerleader, a mentor, support system, and role model. Thank you for this. Again, my name is Brendan Murphy, and you can contact me through Twitter at Dandari, or check out my uh, website, philosophywithouthome.com.